Now we're going to talk about the proper use of a dominant dog collar. This is a dominant dog collar. The correct way to measure your dog for a dominant dog collar and where the dominant dog collar should ride on your dog's neck. This is not how a dog should have a dominant dog collar on. I left it on there intentionally to show you. A dominant dog collar should fit right up underneath the dog's chin and right behind the ears. And the way to measure for that is simple. You just take your measuring device, you're just, and you can use a tape measure, or you could use a string and then measure the string, but this dog has a 19 inch neck. So we have a 19 inch dominant dog collar. And the way it works is, you got a floating ring here. It goes up and down. When we wrap this around the dog's neck, we don't connect it to this ring at the end, we connect it to the floating ring. Just like this, wrap around the dog's neck. And we connect the snap to the floating ring. And the dog wears it just like that. Now what's the advantage of that? Number one, on a big headed dog, if you just used a slip lead that didn't have the floating ring, you would have to get a collar that's big enough. You would have to get a collar that's big enough to go over the dog's head. And this collar is three inches too big to be used as a dominant dog collar. But if you were just gonna use a slip lead, that's what you would be forced to use, like that, just to get it on over the head. The second reason that's a bad deal is if you have your leash attached to a slip lead that's big enough to go over the dog's head, you have to move, you have to move your lead that far to have it tighten up on the dog to give it any kind of a correction at all. Whereas with a dominant dog collar that's fit correctly where there's only an inch or two here on slack, you only have to move your, to tighten it up on the dog, you only have to move the collar that far. You don't have to move it four or five or six inches. You only have to move it an inch or two and you all of a sudden have your dog's attention. So that's the reason for, a, that's the reason, or the two reasons for a dominant dog collar. One is to work it as an actual training collar for dominant and aggressive dogs, for reactive dogs, and to use it as a backup collar for prongs. And I have a video on this course and on our website on how prong collars work with a backup collar both how they work and then the options you have with the prong collar for the various types of leashes you can use. And there's a lot of different options there that make life a lot simpler. So in closing out this segment, I'm gonna say this one more time. How you measure your dog for a dominant dog collar. You take your tape measure or your string, you put it right behind the dog's ears, and you pinch it off. And there's how long it has to be. It's exactly 19 inches. Now here's the important thing to remember. When we're measuring a dominant dog collar, I'm gonna put the 19 inches right at the bottom of the clip here. We bring it down, and there it is. That's the correct size. Go to our website. If your measurement, an example here, if your measurement is 19 inches by a 19 inch dominant dog collar to be used as a dominant dog collar. If you're gonna use it as a backup collar, buy one that's three inches, four inches longer than what you would normally use the dominant dog collar for.